Ever since I was a very little girl, I always knew I did not want to be a mother. I lived happily with this decision my whole adult life, only to find out, literally a couple of years ago, that the whole point of motherhood is actually to experience unconditional love. That kind of love that requires no reciprocity and that makes us feel safe and grounded because we know there is at least one person in the world who believes we are the most special human, our mother. When we grow up, we try to recreate this unique bond, this safety net, this place we can call home, usually with our life partner. I may have chosen not to be a mother, but I was fortunate enough to find this special place in someone else's heart. Martin came into my life at the time when I was not looking for love. I wasn't ready for it. It was not love at first sight. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, I didn't even find him that attractive in the beginning. But there was something about him that made me pay attention. He was interesting, mature, funny, a great listener. As a matter of fact, on our first date, I broke my number one rule about dating. I talked about my ex. <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> Obviously, I never thought that I would see him again. But the universe obviously had other plans. We met again a few months later. One thing led to another. I was convinced it was a one-night stand. But to my surprise, he persisted. He pursued me, calling me every single day at a time when international calls were absolutely not free. <laughs> he won me over by showing me that he was willing to invest in our relationship, and I'm not talking money here. He took the time to make me feel safe special, wanted. He made me feel like I was the only girl in the world. And that's what we all want, isn't it? We all want to be the one. We believe love is only real if it's exclusive, if it's all about us. Esther Perel, the world's most famous relationship expert, says that the premise of modern love is, if you truly love, you should not be attracted to others. But is it really how it works? And is it really the only way to love? Biologically speaking, if you think about it, it makes sense that we want to be loved exclusively, to feel validated and secure in ourselves. On top of that, everything we see and hear from our mom and dad playing house, our fairy tales, our Disney movies, pop songs. Essentially, the entire human society tells us that happy ever after is one person choosing the other forever. Even now, in 2020, our wedding vows still say, till death do us part. Even though we live twice as long as people did in the Middle Ages. <laughs> And thankfully, divorce is no longer a cardinal sin. Martin and I fell for this story too. After a few months of getting to know each other, we gradually started excluding other people from our relationship. And eventually, we moved in together. I literally had to move countries to make this happen, but that's what you do for love, right? A couple of years later, when uh, we were living in London, one day he comes home and says, hey, what do you think about moving to Hong Kong with me? My first reaction is, whoa, you know I don't actually like Asian food? <laughs> so what am I going to eat? Italian, he says, and I'm sold. <laughs> I may have thought twice about this decision. Had I known at the time that this beautiful city we live in 
is also known as the graveyard of relationships. <laughs> Many couples come here full of hope and expectations, just like we did, only to find that the entire foundation of their love is shaken to the core. And some never make it. I also don't need to tell you how busy life gets around here, right? When we get busy, we become a lot less present, a lot less caring, and authentic with our loved ones. We disconnect. Martin and I did too, and we didn't even notice it. The net result of that was a short affair he had with someone from work. Wow, the unimaginable had just happened. I honestly had never imagined this possibility. It hurt. I was devastated. I thought about leaving. But then I realized that maybe the reason it hurt so much was actually because I had made the assumption that I will always be the only girl he would want. And when that didn't happen, my ego was hurt. I now know that infidelity is a make it or break it opportunity for any relationship. What doesn't kill you really makes you stronger. In our case, it made it perfectly clear to both of us that no matter what, we really wanted to be together. That we valued monogamy and fidelity a lot less than we valued connection, communication, honesty, and trust. All values I now know are non-negotiable requirements for pretty much any relationship. We talked things through. We rebuilt our trust and got close again. A few months later, I had a one-night stand. It was very casual, it didn't lead to any relationship, but we kept chatting. Martin happened to see one of these chats, put two and two together. But unlike me, who had freaked out and demanded that he end everything immediately, he didn't actually say anything to me for months. When he finally brought it up, he did it in the nicest, sweetest, calmest way possible, demonstrating a perfect example of self-control, love, and acceptance. I was a very lucky girl. We hit restart and began rebuilding our relationship once again, consciously and deliberately. A relationship based on open communication and honesty. And then I did it again, twice. Each time these experiences taught us that love is actually not about possession but understanding and caring, and helped us dig deeper into the motivations that were pushing us to seek excitement outside of our relationship. The second time around, the words open relationship came up. I honestly didn't even know what it meant. But once he paints a picture of what might be, I'm all in, I mean, this is a perfect case of having your cake and eating it. So what's not to like? That was the day when the first part of my lesson in unconditional love started. If you love somebody, set them free. We set each other free by letting go of the expectation of physical and emotional exclusivity. And just like that, from one day to the next, it was okay to be attracted 
to other people. And more importantly, it was okay to act on that attraction. In those moments, through Martin's acceptance, compassion, and forgiveness, I learned that it is entirely possible to love someone very, very deeply, even when you know that you are not the only one. And that what truly matters is the commitment that you make to each other every single day. I am delighted to share with you today, ladies and gentlemen, that being able to enjoy the attention of others without guilt or shame, without having to hide your feelings, is a truly transformational experience. Letting go of that fear of judgment, the fear of losing that special place in their heart, the fear that maybe after all they will decide that you are not the one. It is an extremely empowering experience to feel real love for two people at the same time and to not be conflicted about it. To know that each of them is in your life for a very, very good reason and each is teaching you something absolutely fundamental about yourself. It is an even more empowering experience to see the same happening for your partner and to actually be happy about it. It was, of course, not all always this easy. On the odd occasions when we would fight, because we did, he would sometimes ask me, so what does this mean? Are you breaking up with me? The thing is, whatever was going on, However angry we were with each other in those moments, the answer to that question was always, I cannot imagine my life without you. No matter how exciting our new partners were, we were always number one for each other. We were always each other's home. And then one day, everything fell apart. Our whole life got turned upside down. Martin had cancer. Nothing would ever be the same. He was a real inspiration, though. He was going to chemotherapy treatment in the morning and to the gym in the afternoon. He continued to work throughout, always, always believing in recovery. For me, though, nine months into this process, after two absolutely crushing rounds of chemo, when he only weighed 51 kilos, every day I would look into his eyes and I would see the light in there. Going dimmer. He did recover, though, for a bit, against all odds. His weight and energy came back to normal. Believe it or not, he even competed in dragon boat races. And slowly, normal life resumed. But in all this time, in the background, his disease kept advancing, slowly but surely, and not responding very well to treatment. Until one day, when it became just too difficult to ignore. And that was when the second part of my lesson in unconditional love started. Watching the love of my life fall in love with another woman was actually easy. Compared to watching him become less and less of the man he was, and more and more of a helpless child. I did have the motherhood experience in the end. On fast forward and weirdly in reverse. Being there with him 24-7, I learned that 
you know nothing about selfless love until the person in your care cannot eat, walk, shower, or dress without you. Until you wake up every few minutes just to check that they're still breathing. Until some days they don't remember who they are, nor do they remember you. Until eventually the machines that measure their heartbeat literally flatline. When that happened, after five long weeks in hospital, I felt the loss, the grief, the sadness. But the overwhelming emotion in those moments was gratitude. Gratitude for having him in my life and having the opportunity to learn this invaluable life lesson and to not see myself as a victim. Learning to love more than one person at the time has truly changed my life. But being there with Martin through all these hard times, laughing through the tears, staying strong and positive when there was literally no hope, has taught me so much more. It's taught me that love is not at all what we think it is. It's not a Disney movie, that's for sure. But it's exactly whatever we, each and every one of us, make of it. So make your own love story. <laughs>